Welcome back to Lip Medallion. It's Victory Sunday. Hey, all right. I finally got one in after how many weeks of not having one? Of course, we played Friday night, and I was hoping to do a Victory Saturday. But like the rest of y'all, midnight, whew, when that game ended, by the time I got back to my Airbnb, had to pass out about 2 a.m. probably. By the time I fully went to sleep, woke up, had to get back to Houston, I decided to spend my birthday after the Roadrunners gave me an early birthday present, spent my birthday all day Saturday just lounging and watching all sorts of college football. It was a fun day of college football. It really was by the time I got, got back to Houston. Got back to Houston about, what, 2.30, 3 o'clock, somewhere around there. So I got more of the later games. Listened to them, the early games, driving back from San Antonio to Houston. Anyway, enough of that. What did I tell you? I told you, USF is an enigma. Which team was going to show up was the USF team that played Alabama going to show up? Or was the team that played FAU going to show up? <laughs> we got both, didn't we? Because I'm telling you, that, fir that first quarter ended 7-7. Seven to seven. Hold on, let me make sure I'm right. Yeah, that first quarter ended 7-7. Seven to seven. It was 14-14 at one time, and then we made it 28-14 at the half. So that first team that showed up, that, that showed up, uh, that was against Alabama, the Alabama's version of them, showed up. They went home about halfway through the second quarter. And then it was all UTSA after that, right? I mean, I know they scored 21 points, right? But, man, we played really good football. Now, we didn't run the ball particularly well. And I'm, I'm going to talk about that a little bit because you're going to see our stats overall look great. You know how and why our stats look great. I'll talk about that later also. But let's talk about why our stats didn't look so, so great running the football traditionally because we kept running it inside, 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 inside. Even I was starting to get a little worn out by it. But my... The wife says, hey, why do they keep doing that? That doesn't work. Why do they keep doing that? That doesn't work. And in my mind, I'm going, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. And then I had to start thinking, and I was explaining why you do stuff like that, right? They were feeding it inside, feeding it inside, feeding it inside, keeping them inside the box, keeping those linebackers inside the box. It started opening up. It opened up the pass game big time. You saw it, right? Where we did not take full advantage of it was we did not go over the middle enough. I, I think we had them already that we could have run more routes, seven yards, you know, fake it, have a route go seven yards behind them because the, the linebackers are going to come up, throw it over their head. And if you think about the one uh, slant pass, uh, was that to Cephas or... or Kellogg, I think that was Kellogg, right? The one slant, slant pass to Kellogg that he took to the house. That really wasn't that deep of a route. But because they were so respecting the run, right? Because th they could be run on. They were block, They were boxing it in, right? Don't get me wrong. And we got our yardage kind of by bouncing it out uh, with our traditional running backs. That once their linebackers started stepping up, we got Kellogg and he was going to the house, right? And then we started being able to go wide with our pass plays. Then Frank could run it wide. Frank running the football was just incredible. 
I'm going to talk about that right now, 100%. Frank, Frank was just incredible. That is his career best game. It's got to be. I'm not even going to look it up because you can prove me. If someone prove me wrong, if I'm wrong, he had 531 yards of total offense, 112 yards rushing, 419 yards passing. That is, that is just incredible when you when you put it when you put that into context. Six six total touchdowns, three passing, three rushing. I mean, mm, mm, it was incredible to watch. I happened to be in the touchdown club in the early in the second in the third quarter, uh, just because I wanted. I had some guy buddies that sit behind me that have season tickets. And they only come in for the first game, and he said he's going to be back for the last game for sure, right? Because he'd be in he'd be in San Antonio for Thanksgiving, right? So he got here for the game, yada yada yada, right? And he'll be through Thanksgiving, and then go back to Colorado where he works. And I said, "Hey, have you guys been down there?" So we went we went down there, and so we're sitting there, <laughs> and they go, "Well, we need to go to the bathroom." So they they were in the bathroom when Frank ran that ball to us. Oh man, came right almost exactly to us. He went right towards the goalpost, but you know touchdown clubs. As you're looking at the goalpost, it's the left of it. And then he came running right by in front, man. It was incredible. Because I am telling you, when he when he got through those guys and he did a little spin move, it was a parting of the Red Sea type run. There was nobody there. All he had to do was outrun him. All he had to do was outrun him. And everybody was everybody had the angle on him. He's gone. Boom. And then that final r touchdown run that he had where he faked it and went out. I know he had to think, what did he do wrong? Like, wh where is everybody? Did I teleport somewhere? <laughs> I mean, that was probably the easiest touchdown he has ever scored in his life, and if not, tied with the easiest. That's where committing to the run on the inside forces those linebackers up. Now, mind you, I don't know where Kavorian is. I don't know why he's not getting more playing time. I, I'm a little concerned. Maybe they're saving him for Tulane. Maybe they're saving him for later in the season. I've got no word on it. I've got no intel. I've got nothing. Like, no, no, nobody knows, right? But he was out there for victory formation two weeks ago. He came in super late this Wednesday, Friday. So, I mean, he looks healthy. He looks healthy. I know he had a shoulder issue about four games back. Maybe they're just like, look, let's let that heal. Let's let that heal. We can win. We can win without you. Let's be more impactful later. Who knows? Trust trust the coaching staff, right? Now let's talk about Josh Cephas, right? What an incredible career he's had for us. He was third man totem pole. When you think about it, third man totem pole, right? He turns around and is now, because Zakari transferred and because JT got injured, he's now our all-time leader. Well, that's perseverance, right? That's patience and perseverance and good for him because he's been a great, great player for us. You know, he could have been one of those guys that he has talent in his own right. You're seeing it this year, right? He has talent in his own right. He could have pitched a fit. He could have, uh, you know, but he didn't. He played. He got enough, one, he got enough playing time, right? There was no sit in the bench because we played all three of them. So that's why he's up there. But he could have easily just stomped his feet, held his breath, rolled around on the ground. Eh, I'm not getting up playing time. You're not throwing the ball to me, right? He didn't. He didn't. He's played. No he's been nothing but a road runner. That's all he's been as a road runner, a great road runner. And there's a lot to be said about that and the culture that has been instilled in UTSA. It started early on. Don't get me wrong. We have guys who are roadrunners through and through from the early days. Right? And mind you, some of these guys started at the end, tail end of, of Frank Wilson, and they're they're, they stayed with us. God bless them. They stayed with us. They could have easily said, I'm out of here. Right? But they stayed with us. And now they're reaping the rewards. They have a chance to play for another conference title. They got one game to get through to get there. We'll save that later, right? It's just, it was an incredible performance by our Roadrunners. Just, just absolutely incredible. You, you can't, 
really quantify it till you understand what was at stake and what they've risen from the first four games of the season, right? Gave away the Houston game with turnovers. We know what happened at Army. Injuries and everything against Tennessee. Didn't expect much. Got injured against Texas State. That's really what put us sideways. But then everybody just knuckled up. Something changed. And they rolled off seven conference wins. I would have never guessed in my lifetime that we would have been 7-0 and in conference at this point. Even last year. Even before... The first three, four games, even for that, I didn't say that. I said, oh, five wins. We probably win two out of conference, maybe three. So we could be five wins. Sorry about that, a low, low battery, so I don't know what it looks like. But we have gotten to the point that I, we're eight wins on the season. And I said, if we got that, I am, ex I am stoked. We have a chance to win 10 games, if you think about that. 11 games, actually. Right? Eight, nine and oh, nine wins with Tulane, 10 wins in the conference, 11 if we win a bowl game. Right? We have a shot at it. That is a magnificent, magnificent achievement for this football team. But you got to take what you've earned, right? Nothing is given. You're, even if you've earned it, it's not given. You still got to go pick it up, right? That takes effort. No one's going to just, here you go. Even though you've earned it, here you go, right? You got to go take it, right? So we tell them, come and take it in our stadium. Well, now they got to go and take it, right? Anyway, let's get back to the game just a little bit, real quick. I mean, we, we all saw it, but let's go to team stats. USF had 427 yards of offense. We had 643 total yards of offense. Now, when we go to the running, running thing, I, I said we didn't run it all that well. 13 carries for 37 yards for Henry, Cobb. Cobb actually had the most effective running of our running backs. Eight for 34. Amador with that one sweep. I was also saying that they're, they're susceptible wide. We need to run a sweep. We ran it the one time. Boom, he was gone, man. For 23 yards, that was, that was a beautiful play call. Rocco Griffin, eight for 20. I mean, those guys took a beating on the inside. They really took a beating. Josh Cephas, nine for 163 yards. Oh, just incredible. McEwen, seven for 91. Great to have him back. Amador stepped up in McCoy's absence because he kind of filled that, that spot, right? That Willie McCoy would normally play. Cardenas, four for, 30, four, uh, four for 37. Ogle Kellogg, one for 33. That one TD, that was beautiful. And uh, Robert Henry, three for 16. I mean, 419 yards passing. Just spread it around. I mean... There's a reason why the game lasted that long. Now, I do know this. If we're in the old timing clock, ESPN would have never gone to three-minute timing breaks at hour three. No. See, this is, what, this is the thing. We had more football. They had smaller amounts of commercials. They would throw in 10 commercials. Anyway, Roadrunners, it was a beautiful game, and I want to share one last thing. Hopefully, my battery doesn't die. I got this signed. You saw me on national TV. I was one of the last people he signed on TV with the hat. That's Frank. That means I got to retire this hat. I want to share this hat also. That's Coker. That's Souza. That's Leonard and Hickey. Right? Those are probably our five most influential players and, and people in our program so far. I need to get trailer on that hat. Maybe I'll go to practice and see if he'll sign it. Peace out, Roadrunners. It was a great game. It was a great win. I think we came out of it relatively healthy, which is good. We played late Friday night. We got a Friday game against Tulane, so luckily we got the dub. We still got a full week of he healing for the team. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Let's go get the dub in Tulane. Peace out. Birds up. Hey, road owners, I'm back. I'm in, my, I'm in my home office. You can see how I have it adorned, right? All that fun stuff. But I'm, I'm was, I failed to mention one thing because I was running out of battery power, right? And I don't want to have to start my video over because I do these all in one take. I take the good with the bad, all the mistakes, all that fun stuff. What I wanted to say was 
Thank you to the USF fans who showed up. That was a Friday night game. Late. And they still out-traveled everybody who came to our stadium. Except for Texas State this year. They still out-traveled everybody. If you want to build a conference, I'm going to say it till the day I die. You'll listen to me. Somebody will listen. You have to reciprocate traveling as a fan base. I'm not saying you have to go to every road game, right? But there's no reason USF out-travels North Texas, out-travels Rice, and out kind of might, might probably out-travel Houston or be right up there with it. They were there. They had a lot of people. I'm going to, I shared a photo in it. I put a photo, I'm going to put a photo before this video at the end of the other one. And like I said, my bad for missing it. I was running out of battery power bad and I did not want to have to start over because I used my DJI, right? And I'm finally figuring that out. I want to be bad about it, but that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. That's how conferences are built. That's exactly how conferences are built. It's a myth that people care about Baylor on TV. It's a myth. It's an ab In fact, the only people that care about Baylor on TV are the ones too cheap to go to their stadium to watch their games. You've, you've seen it. Did you see the U UH game? See how few people were there? Now, I know we didn't have a lot, but we had a Friday night game at 8 o'clock. We, 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 we know we're competing with the Spurs. We know we're competing with high school football. And it was an 8 o'clock game. I mean, whatever. But thank you, USF fans, for traveling. I thanked them. I said, you've officially traveled better than teams that, that are much closer. And the guy's like, all right. Meaning he knew exactly what I was telling him. That this is this means your program means a lot. And I guarantee you, we've never we've never been reciprocated better than we've given. I am I know that for a fact. I've been in UH Stadium when we've been there multiple times. Rice. Well, that, that's easy. North Texas. Texas State might be the only one. That's why we need to play them every time. Peace out. Birds up. Much love.